Fun uh, facts. So they said that uh, Amazing Jonathan was a big influence on them. Oh, I get. Well, oh, nice. Didn't he show up in in the one of the documentaries? I thought I, I I thought he was in the uh, the YouTube one. Probably, yeah. I just this is just coming from a friend of his was telling me about like you know you know kind of the story, AJ about how like you know they cite him as sort of one of the influences of like you know. Dude. Oh, you missed it last last week, right, Brian? Uh, 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 Andrew watched the YouTube one and he really liked it. Oh, right I, on. I'm super unpolished, but I enjoyed it. I mean, I just for a story about Jonathan. Yeah. Well, yeah, and and that was one of those as we were going back and forth on like what, whatever the other the Hulu one should or shouldn't have been, uh, it, it was fairly remarkable how many of the things you wanted. Like I'm like, it's already there. That exists. It's yeah. yeah I'm, I'm glad that it landed. I mean, again, it was un, it was rough, but I, I I just felt like oh okay, at least that is out there now. You know? Yeah. Because like the whole thing about the guy whose manager worked them for years was like, you know, yeah. Hello, everybody. We're going to get started with three things here in just a few minutes. Happy Labor Day, Bear Day. Today, Bear Day is Labor Day. Uh, hold on one second. I'm, I'm texting. Everyone, the pause that Labor we, Day. I, I, I paused Labor Day because I'm conducting labor because I, I, I'm texting the person that we were talking about saying, hey, can we talk later on? How was your weekend, Andrew? My weekend was uh, excellent. Um been uh started the new i've got a new novel i've got to get finished so i just started that and i've been working on some software stuff so nice it's fun fun weirdly weird hours oh you no i'm uh, even weirder for me so and then usually i just go right to sleep but weirder hours like going to bed late and then like staying up and just thinking about in this case like code or plot points so that's the problem is you know, I'm there for like two hours going, oh, I can do this, and I can do that, and then the sun's up, you know, it's like that cartoon <laughs> sun, you know, smile comes up, like, good morning, good morning, and you're like, ah! <laughs> Accurate. I love that. Dude, I, uh, yeah, man, I'm all ready to dive in, if, if, if you beautiful gentlemen are. I uh, just need one more second, and then I'll be good to go. Uh, it's just the three of us today, as it always is. Yeah, Everybody, no, so. as always. That's why the original title of the podcast was Just Three Guys, starring Brian, Andrew, and Bryce. <laughs> Which reminds me of the uh, Lonely Island video, Just Two Guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just two guys having a good time, having a good time. I'll tell you what, man. Full on gray. Full on gray. Look at that. Ah, Full on gray. All right, I'm good to go. Dragon teeth. All right. <laughs> well, if I get here... <laughs> <laughs> all right you good andrew great all right let's do the show in three two hello and welcome to the weird things podcast i'm andrew main joined by mr bryce castillo hello everybody brian brushwood hey man you know my favorite thing is about there's nothing unusual about this episode i mean three is the Normal perfect things. perfect yeah. Yeah. one two three you know Mm -hmm. Stability. Everything you need. That's three. Right. Three. Three. Triangle, very strong shape. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Take that. Pyramid, Take that. four sides, but from one angle, looks like three. Looks like three. So, there we go. We solved it. Five sides, but, you know, this is not, not the time or place for that, okay? Mm -hmm. If you add a fourth side, suddenly it becomes boring and old, you know. It, square. Who cares? Oh. Uh, 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 <laughs> see, see what I did there? Yeah. Yeah, uh, just, just being a little obtuse there, guys. So, um, <laughs> I, I hate myself for saying that. I really do. Uh, Bryce, tell me you're going to erase that from the show. Sure. <laughs> no, <it's not> <laughs> uh, I, that, you know, that's the thing is like, I hate puns. Like, I hate puns. Like, Wait, I have, you do? Like, this... What? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. My, my oh, wife gosh. has like an irrational soft spot for puns. She can't help but just immediately fall for wordplay. She loves them. Yeah, that's yeah. I just I'm like, Ugh. I worked with a guy. He's a really neat guy, but he used to do them all the time, and it drove me nuts. It just drove me nuts. Mm. Um, I'm like, I'm like, your your puns is like my use of sarcasm. You know, mm. neither one is really or my use of self deprecation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Precisely, uh, gentlemen. Oh my God, hey, did you did you watch? Did you see the Starhopper? 
I, I, yes. I, it, it hopped. It, it went up and it went down. It went all around. But most importantly, I saw the headlines saying that the next test would be like, what, 200 kilometers or some crazy crap? Something like that, the nearest galaxy. So Starhopper is the test platform that SpaceX built to test the Raptor engine and the plumbing and the control systems that are going to go into the next generation rocket, the Starship. And they did a test last week where they sent this thing up 500 feet in the air. Now, understand the size of what we're watching the video right now of it in Boca Chica. That thing is six stories tall. That is 60 feet tall. And, mm. and to put that in perspective, understand that because this is only a test apparatus, that means like uh, very little fuel. So imagine however yeah. big the star hopper is when you take a look at the picture, uh, another third of that or more uh, of fuel on top of it, and then another third of that of, of cargo space on top of it. Yep. So if you've not seen the video, check it out. It is amazing because you're watching... You know, we watched years ago when they had the grasshopper test footage showing this rocket taken off in the Texas desert. And, you know, people are like, what's this? First, they thought it was CG. Then people are like, oh, OK, I guess that's something that's cool. And then now we live in an age where rockets land back on the platform. And that was amazing. Now we're looking at a much bigger rocket, a huge rocket that's mm -hmm. got the super powerful engine. And they did a test. The thing did what it's supposed to do. Looks amazing. Now the next step is they plan on testing the Starship Mark I, which is going to be that with three engines, as Brian described, about three times the height. So it's going to be a much bigger vehicle. SpaceX says they plan on testing that in a few months. They think they're months away, not years, not even necessarily next year, but this year we might get to see the Starship this is Watch. this is that zero wow. to one moment, man. It's like they went mm -hmm. from not a thing to to a thing and everything else is iterative, including this, actually. You know, it, looking back on it, it really was that grasshopper moment was the most fundamental. Is this even a uh, plausible way to, to handle stuff? And clearly it was. And everything mm -hmm. else is just an engineering problem of, of iterating to a mm -hmm. more robust, more reliable design. And so what's the scale of the next test, Andrew? Is it going to be the full height ship? Is it going to be yeah. the full? Or, okay. It's going to be next one will be the the, the Mark One, which is going to be the, the full size of the upper stage, the Starship. And the uh, plan is that that is something that they're saying will do maybe like a 20 kilometer. They want to do like 20 wow. kilometers up. Okay, and then and then uh, that works out well. He's, Elon has said... We're waiting for details. There's supposed to be maybe some more an announcement later this month, a little more details on the on the plan plan for it, possibly orbital. Now the question people are asking are they saying when you say orbital, do you mean just sending one of those things up there on a one time into orbit, single stage to orbit, or are you talking orbital putting this on top of the super heavy, which will be the big the the booster stack? So if you've seen the photos, if you go to uh, the Reddit forum, which is pretty good, there's a uh, 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 Reddit has there's SpaceX and SpaceX Lounge. SpaceX Lounge updates more frequently, and there's also uh, a couple other. There's like NASA Spaceflight has a pretty good forum. You can see some photos of things in construction, big cylinders. Right now, they put everything up inside of the the this metal tent construction because hey there's a hurricane offshore well back back everything up uh from the way you phrased it i almost got the impression that that they were implying that it was a single stage to orbit uh opportunity like if there's if there's essential i would imagine if there's no payload if you make it light enough you could theoretically do single stage to orbit is, is that what they're implying musk has said that they could do it's capable of that he says that you could do it you wouldn't get it back down because it would be going up there and there'd be like no fuel left. But he has said that it's the, it seems to be capable of single stage to orbit. Now, he said the same thing, too, is the the Falcon 9 booster might be capable of doing single stage to orbit if it's just uh, no payload, no stack on top of it. But we've never done it. That's extraordinary. That's yeah. that's that's phenomenal. Yeah. But the advantage is if you use a booster, you get everything back. Yeah, <laughs> and enough fuel to land. Uh, and of course, that's what we really want to see. So single stage to orbit means you burn out all your fuel. You have a hollowed out husk that is as light as can be. It makes it, it does a lap and then falls down and dies in the ocean. Whereas, um, you know, if we have multiple stages, then we're able to get a, a, a robust payload up there and have enough fuel that it can descend onto the planet and then just land itself pretty as can be. Yeah.
what is something nobody ever cared about before? You know, before we realized that you could reuse these things. And, you know, we've yet to reuse an upper stage in this capacity. I mean, you could argue, uh, like, I mean, the shuttle, you know, the shuttle was, it was, the shuttle was such, space shuttle was such a different kind of beast than anything we'd seen before. And kind of what made it sort of amazing was, because the shuttle was, the shuttle had its engines, which fired too when it took off, but because they were hydrogen burning, it was higher, you know, it was a much cleaner burn. So it didn't, weren't, weren't as pronounced as the solid rocket boosters on the side. But, uh, you know, that was, you know, if you consider the shuttle sort of the, the upper stage two or, you know, I mean, we got that back. So mm. that was cool. I feel like I just watched you do a lot of internal politicking about how to speak nicely about the shuttle yeah. when it's, when it, when it clearly was, and I, I don't want to say like a boondoggle or anything, but it's like, uh, it was always called a reusable spacecraft, but I feel like there needs to be an asterisk or maybe air quotes yeah. around the word no, reusable. I mean, actually, the, the thing is that I, I can sometimes be very dismissive of it because it was so expensive because so much of it wasn't, was, was refurbishable, not so much reusable and all this. But then I'm like, in my head, I'm like it was amazing though. It was an amazing sure. part. And that, and that was the sort of thing in my head. I'm like, like, don't like, cause like, 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 yeah, no, that's legit. It was like legit cool but i mean like the amount of refurbishment that had to be done on it and what you know that the solid rocket boosters on the side the main tank you know the solid rocket is like oh they're reusable well yeah sort of you know the, the, the like i can reuse this coke can by filling up with diet coke but i gotta clean it wash it out put a new top on but other than that reusable you know <laughs> um but so it's exciting times and it's a Ah, you know, that watching the video, what's amazing now is like SpaceX, like a, just like five minutes before the launch, they said, hey, there's, there's a live stream popped up where you could watch it live and up close and see it take off and watch all the different steps. I highly recommend check that out, but also check out one of the feeds. There's there is a, a number of different people now who cover this. There are there are space podcasters who will go rent out houses or borrow you know property from people there. And so when you watch these things now, you can see telephoto lenses capturing this in real time and get multiple streams of this and there are some really good people doing coverage and giving you a lot more explanation on what goes on behind the scenes yeah so. dude we're in the age of the citizen journalist where all of a sudden you know somebody of a middle class means has all of the infrastructure all of the technology all of the the branding all of the reach that they need to cover these things and so mm -hmm. uh I, I i wonder if so if I heard you correctly, SpaceX last minute decided to or appeared to last minute decide to have an official stream. Yeah, they think they're with these some of these tests, if they think they're going to happen like about five minutes before the test, they'll, they'll pop up with a live stream. I mean, yeah. in an alternate reality, there's not much of an upside for SpaceX to do an official feed of what might end up being a uh, disaster. Uh, I got to feel that that's kind of a response to the citizen journalism that we're seeing. Yeah, I think, you know, they're I think that because it's being covered and things like that, that they might as well show this sort of thing and, and better to, you know, I think have but, it be a, a and outlet of course, for it. Elon Musk has never been shy about, you know, sharing, uh, you know, the True. disasters and all that stuff. Yeah. But but my point yeah. is, is like I wonder in a world without YouTube, whether or not this kind of extremely short, semi-impressive, uh, kind of middling, a, this isn't a display of power. This is a straight up test. Like, like, well, we just got to see if this is going to work. Uh, so it's kind of all downside if it blows up midway, uh, because I'm, I'm guessing SpaceX wasn't thrilled when the uh, crew capsule exploded. Right. right? So, yeah. so, uh, but I have to feel that there's that upward pressure from the bottom up given the fact that it's like, well, there's drones flying around, there's people so-and-so's YouTubing from over there. I have to feel like it's like, well, I guess we have to share all this. It might as well be our feed that gets all the views. Yeah. Though it yeah. doesn't, th these sorts of things don't, I mean, this isn't them on an iPhone. Like it's, it, it takes some planning to, to put this stuff together ahead of yeah, time. Yeah, drone footage. But I mean, they're capturing that. I mean, yeah, it's some effort, but it's, it's you know, getting, when you have, when you're at a point where you have that many people willing to, show up at their own dime to live stream this thing and stay there for days to capture a test. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah, it's probably worth it to, you know, <laughs> we share it too. That's the other thing too, is imagine like, uh, I could imagine in a large institution like SpaceX, somebody somewhere would uh, maybe suggest, well, what if we just chased him off? What if we made it unpleasant for him to do this or whatever? And then immediately mm -hmm. 
some PR person might say like, uh, that seems like that would be bad <laughs> because this is well, somebody who Yeah, that's yeah. not loves really an attitude. Yeah, that's not really the attitude that they you have, usually get They're off. doing this from homes. So people who live there, around there, and, you know, the you, part of being a good citizen there is if, if you get your community turning against you, you know, like this would be no, not good. No bueno. Not, yeah. 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 But it's exciting. Again, um, my... My favorite person to talk about this, I've I plugged this show before, is Scott Manley. Uh, he's just, you know, he's, I, I think his, his YouTube shows are delightful. I learn stuff all the time by, you know, listening to him talk about stuff. He's just such a, he's one of these great explainers and, you know, one of these people that I just love is, love is out there creating cool stuff. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So, um, but you know whose stuff is great to follow? Yeah. And support. Oh, it's, who? It's us. Have you, oh, what? That's Are right. you saying that, that that people can support the show by going to patreon.com slash weird things? I am saying they that. They can keep us loud, live, and independent by joining the 275 other patrons? That's right. Every week, even even on Labor Day. We even with the even without the person who's not even here. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I, we, I don't know we, who that would be. We will, uh, we, also, when did, not when quite did you sure. shave off that beard? Because you look real different in yeah, that video. I uh, I had some facial stuff done. <laughs> uh no, we uh we, we like doing the show. We do it every week here because you guys support at patreon.com slash weird things and you get after things. Like a day or two early, so check it out. Right Patreon. on. Slash weird things. Gentlemen. Uh -oh. Yes. Yeah. You're clever guys. You're yeah. clever, right? Yeah, we've been called that just now, that. live on the air. <laughs> yeah, I mean, by ourselves, deferentially. That's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Um, we've talked a little about simulation theory. Thought about the idea that you know maybe this universe we're living in is manufactured or whatever, and just mm -hmm. talked about the idea of like how would you try to test this? How would you be able to do this? And I think for the first time here, we have an experiment of a creature can, you know, capable of reason who has also come upon the same sort of their version of this theory and actually put it to the test. Put it to the test and found out their world was a lie. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you're saying a uh, – it sounds like you're describing an said, AI bot that was asked the question – do you exist or do you live in a simulation? And it correctly figured out I am li I am a simulated being. Close enough. Close he, enough. He said yeah, creature, but... which makes me think it might not be an AI. I mean, creature. Oh, oh, it was like, like a biological like a, a creature living thing. That like uh, birds are smart. We know birds are very smart. Maybe dolphins. Maybe dolphin hit a touchpad that said Matrix was real. Dot dot. Uh, you know what I saw today? Quick side jag. Uh, sure. When I wake up, usually that's that's my only opportunity to goof around before we have to start creating content all day. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was goofing around on on Reddit, and there was a uh, video of a crow that had figured out that it could ask humans for help because it was thirsty. And uh, uh, so mm -hmm. it, the the whole thing plays out of they're like, oh man, this crow won't leave, and the crow walks over to the bottled water sitting there, kind of taps it twice and oh, then wow. looks at the human and then taps it twice and looks at the human. And wow. then there's, there's a bit of like, what, what's going on here? Oh, take it away. Go away. And, and then the crow's like, but, uh, you've got the stuff in the thing. Will mm -hmm. you do the thing? And then it ends with them. Uh, like provisionally they open it up and they pour the a bit of water into the cap. And, and then the up. bird's like, thanks bro. And then That's off it goes. Great. Is that amazing? That's really great. Uh, I could see a, I, a, a crows. Crows are super smart. I mean, we've talked about crows a lot on this show. Like they're so smart, I wouldn't be surprised if one of them gained sentience and started Morse coding out. Is, is that a marker of sentience? The the recognition that other other creatures are sovereign intelligences and hmm. I wonder. It could it could just be that this particular crow stumbled into the fact that like, Hey man, whenever I peck one of these things, I seem to get water. Yeah. You know, but, uh, at any so, rate, something against instincts. I don't know. Huh? Yeah. So, uh, so are we rate. close with, with dolphins slash crows or AI? AI bombs? Is it a creature? Uh, yeah. I would say, I mean, you just kind of covered everything there, Bryce, from 
physical things to digital things. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. is it a corporeal? Stop dodging is it a noun? the question, officer. <laughs> Did we get uh, it? Well, we, and that's the, the question we get into is whenever we try to come up with definitions of intelligence, we're obviously biased by our own idea of what we think intelligence is. And what's always fun is when we come up with some tests and we see, like we've seen the ones with chimpanzees doing the, you know, the number matching, like they put the screen, like, numbers appear and they disappear and the chimpanzees try to figure out where they were before. Better They're than humans that, can. Than we are. Yeah. And, you know, corvids, like crows and stuff, they have capacities that are amazing for us. Sometimes we read stuff into it, like you can see, you know, an example of like a corvid, like on a branch, whatever, sliding down, you know, a, a, a roof and be like, oh, it's playing, like. No, it's trying to break or get the thing open, but we see it. We want to believe that it's play because it makes it more like us rather than this thing's alien. But it can be very smart in ways that we don't understand, and mm -hmm. you know that's kind of the big thing. So what a good uh, way to put it. Like uh, these are genuine alien intelligences, yep. that, and they're in our own backyard. Like why why do we have to hope for something beyond the stars to to come up and show up? Like like it's it's right now in our backyards. There are, yeah, we, you know we have you know you listen to you know like you take whales you know whale songs and the, the way they behave they be you know they describe them as behaving in almost like in tribes the way the pods behave the interaction the songs the something akin to language takes place there we're finding that out with elephants mm -hmm. and and that's the thing that like we're so uh, we can say yeah these things are smart but we're not quite how sure you know i i wouldn't say that like we have no idea what they get like no we know there's something special there but we're still you know researchers are you know trying to figure this out so the, the, uh there was i believe I, I, it might have been a radio lab might have been something else but but essentially there was uh, i don't know some public debate contest uh podcast that i listened to where they were trying to come up with the best you know surprising stories about uh different creatures and when it came to whale pods they were talking about how um they uh number one their language reaches very very far and appears to be very very nuanced mm -hmm. and there was an implication that there was no I in the sense of a pod language, but instead a perpetual sense of we, sure. like we are sad, we are unhealthy, we are unwell. And that, that tracks when you look at an entire pod of whales that all commit suicide, even though only one of them was sick. Mm -hmm. And so it may be that there's a hive mind consciousness I mean, that they are doing. A, a lot of their societies are pack based or, 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 hive based if you're talking about insects like like those they, that's how they they cluster in, in the wild so exactly it would, it would not be crazy that their language reflected that uh, maybe i mean I, I don't you know the there's a i've been reading a book i think james glick the information he talks about how when explorers went to africa the European explorers there, and they heard the drums. They heard the drum language. They realized the drums are a communication system. We we tried to put this into our own quick, context. Uh, quick, uh, quick side jag, uh, if I remember correctly, just uh, let me know if I'm on the right track. I think there was like a high note and a low note, and then uh, and it would be just drumming, uh, which would travel miles and miles and miles that people could hear. But then they realized mm -hmm. that there was a syntax, and it's uh, essentially there are vowels. It's like you know up, down, down, up, up. Yeah. Not 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 anything as rudimentary as uh, or or as specific as Moore's code, but essentially it was just straight up talking in, hmm. in, in, in yes, this language. But the, the, I think the critical part, though, was that they first tried to put it in the context of, oh, a tonal language like they have, you know, Chinese or something like that. But they had oh. trouble understanding it because what happened over uh, trying to put it into European words. And they, they remember at the time or, you know, the Western words, they said, oh, uh, it's the, they have a version of Morse. Well, this version of Morse is around a thousand years before Morse code was. So, no, they don't have a version of Morse. We have our own wave, and the, the difference of with our language is we language. took, we would take words, break them down alphabetically into each letter, and then we'd try to transmit those. What they did was because they needed error correction, right? And the problem was because traveling long distances, and you did, they didn't have a lexicon of words or letters to transfer from. Literally, it was a spoken language they had to convert into that. So what they did was they would say like, uh, you know, long legs come walking to here, which sounded unnecessarily flowery. But the use of words like, you know, come come to the place, you know, where you eat or something like that, there was a redundancy built into it. So they would mm. say, you're, you know, take the long legs here because without long legs could mean, you know, trees. Well, and there something. was a, a weird, a weird different version of that uh, when bef before the nationwide cellular network was as good as it is now, there would be so many times that signals would drop that 
that uh, me and my, my friend CJ would drop into just the unspoken pattern. Like, like we didn't have to explain what we were doing. It's just, so you would just repeat the same phrase seven times. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Hey, I'm going to the way I'm going to the place. 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 And then, uh, <laughs> and it, and you're because, so crazy in public, but which was fine because at least I, I was relatively confident that, that he understood what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess the thing that we, the paradigm we had to get over here was we're used to, systems that encrypt written words you know and in, in the case of the the drum you know communication was they were never written words to begin with it was entirely verbal so they were trying to use compression systems for that and as you said before like you know just using the vowels or things like this so then you had to use two descriptors to make sure you knew which one that it was you know like you know the long legs as opposed to green legs which would be tree trunks or i'm making this up and butchering so and that's that was a big step where here we have one group of people trying to understand what other group of people who, you know, share the same, almost everything, you know, yet. Yeah, it was that, that's totally the other different. part, like, like, like language uh, differences. Uh, and I think I've talked before about the linguistics course that I took, uh, languages of science fiction. Mm -hmm. We're talking about two essentially genetically identical types of thought. And, and even then we, we, we can't barely understand what's going on. Yeah. And so you take something totally different. So the, the example I wanted to show you was, man, this is like, this is it's two images side by side. I send it to Bryce and man, like this is like a metaphor for everything. This is I want to put this on a poster. I want to blow this up. I want to show this everywhere. <laughs> I don't know if you see it yet. So we got the headline, headline from reads, Daily Star. Genius monkey sharpens rock before smashing against zoo window in a skate bid. Oh, my God. Look at wow. That. <laughs> and so it's this monkey is a. Uh, uh, <laughs> A uh, little monkey has realized there's a thing called glass, and glass has trapped him. Like glass, the glass is sort of like uh, something. He knows this. He's trying to figure out what this is, but he's like, man, guys, I think our world is a lie. I'm maybe imagining what he said. <laughs> that. I, I, I believe these force fields are not as impervious as we think they are. <laughs> oh my God. So regular rocks don't work. This is really strong glass. But this monkey found out if I take the rock and I sharpen the rock. And so you see this wow. video of this monkey has got a rock that he's apparently sharp and who then hit, hits, hits, hits the glass and then boom, shatters. That's incredible. And it's that uh, safety glass like you see on on automobiles. Uh, so it doesn't it doesn't go everywhere, but it, it no. cracks immediately. And, and yeah, he, he watched he hacking the system and discovered how to do this. <laughs> uh, hey, speaking of which, here's a little life pro tip that I did not know. Oh. Did you guys know? that your headrest uh so imagine your car oh you know, spikes yeah 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 uh -huh. your headrest if you remove it those they the end prongs. in a spike for the purpose of smashing out windows i, I, I did that how did i only learn that like i've been alive a long time i mean then... it's no one reads the manual in their car you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's one of those things i know but i'm sure i will forget in a crisis situation yeah, yes i mean how else are they going to sell you the thing that is sitting in my apartment is not even in the car but <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's like, a, the escape it's device one of those skills, yeah escape device. <laughs> the, the thing that it cuts the, the seat belt yep. and it cracks over the window exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's but sitting you... in my key car in my key chest <laughs> with the monkey doing that though and that's like i'm like man like that's that that monkey, that's the smartest. I've never done anything that smart in my life. I mean, yeah, he's uh, he's the Einstein of monkeys. So what are we doing? Locking him up in a cage. Well, yeah. and I wonder what happens next with his monkey. Like, now he knows he can do something. I mean, he can't unknow it, right? He, he, yeah, he can't unknow it. And that information will be passed to other monkeys, probably. Unless well, that's, they... that's the big question is we don't know if there are information units that can be transmitted from individual monkeys to each other. We can see huh. them do things like food washing, things like that seem to be anything directly involving food. They seem to be very good at doing. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's animal behavior scientists will tell you what's interesting is things you will never see. Like you'll never see two chimpanzees. They will never pick up a two by four and help each other carry it. Or uh, they really? also will never trade something away in the current moment for a known future benefit later on. Sure. Like, um, uh, in fact, that's one of the things in uh, The Rational Optimist by, by Matt Ridley. He talks about how, uh, you know, humans' big trick is that uh, we're able to specialize and, and engage in trade where it's like, I'm going to give this up. I'm going to give up one of these things that I'm very good at making so that you will give me two of those things that you're very good at making. Yeah. Uh, that, that is a transaction that uh, apparently all eight brains, except for ours, can't really grasp. Wow. 
And that's you know one of the things that like it gets into is looking at our uh, not just any, we use the term ancestors to th- speak about earlier forms, but we have our cousins, so to speak. Right. You know, now we're finding out there's so many different variations of of hominids that have lived here that we're not even related to. We share ancestors with, but can it on? That might have been a, a big factor of why they never succeeded. You know, the way we did was that they may have lacked certain capacities. Yeah. And lack of an economics and, and, degree. You know, we. We may only have a, a fractional capacity for abstract thought or planning, but just that might be enough. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so, uh, all right. Next next one here, gentlemen. Um, Brian? Yes? I'm not, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life or what you need <laughs> to be goodness. doing. I was really worried about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Brian, uh, Brian has uh, been building a, a – again, compound can be a positive word too. can be a positive word, okay? <laughs> I mean, uh, call it what it is. That's what it is. Yes, compound. Yeah, in yeah, one might say in an Texas. artist collective, but that's fine. Compound a headquarters, tracks. headquarters, a, bil- a building would be – <laughs> an office part. Yeah. A guest of. house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you ever thought about putting this thing out in Airbnb. Yeah. I've got a suggestion for you. Okay. Okay. You know, we, we talk every time of year, we start this, we get the first story, and I do my reminder, hey, folks, just so you know, Halloween's around the corner, so we're going to get all these stupid stories because, you know, I mean, they're fun, but sometimes they're, they're taken a little bit too seriously. But it's like, I wonder why we get the story came out now. Well, the story now is how supposedly haunted by tall man in his t- in tall hat terrifies Airbnb renters. Uh, where, what was it like? Abraham Lincoln's birthplace. He shows up as a ghost. He's like, I'm here again. I was shot Which in the theater. Was, how did they cost? How did the play end? Yes. Uh, so yeah. Um, apparently, their house is haunted, and they rented out an Airbnb and tell you how haunted the house is. Uh, uh, yeah, you know what? It was before. I so I'm reading the New York Post headline: How a couple turned their haunted dream home into a money maker. I was reading this backwards. I was reading this as a ghost has haunted my Airbnb and now I can't use it. But no, you can make money on this. People will want to sit in a... Ah. Dude, uh, <laughs> yeah. when when we are able Gosh. to share more of the details about this uh, particular property, it is the closest thing to a real haunted property that I, I can conceive of with my skeptical mind. It is definitely haunted by a travesty of justice. It's it's crazy. Local KOMU8 calls it the house on Hobo Hill. Mm. So, oh my goodness. I mean, it is a great spooky looking old house. I will give you that. It it, it looks. It could look like, older. It could look older. It could look older. You're like, eh, I don't know. Can you can you crappy it up a bit? <laughs> a li- yeah, maybe. I think if you have a haunted house, even if you're renting it, that gives you. Some leniency to have it be a little dusty, a little dirty, some cobwebs, a little, a little schmutz on the on the I mean, on the crown. I'll tell you this much: there was a, a night that that I spent with uh, Brett Rounceville, the Amtrekker, uh, mm-hmm. where he was shooting some stuff, and uh, in an allegedly haunted house. It was one of those that had been quote unquote investigated by by the dudes or whatever. Uh, it was it was a thrill ride. Like it kind of sucked to get to the end uh, of the goofing around part of the evening and to lay down and realize, oh my god, I'm just laying down in a derelict house. Uh, but then, <laughs> on the flip side, there's the genuine terror of like, okay, well, transient uh, heroin addicts are real, <laughs> and oh, they may be nearby. <laughs> so it was it was a definite thrill ride. Uh, I, I think there's oh, value in that of telling people like, no, 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 this is definitely. Because I remember when we went in, mm-hmm. we were uh, we were flippantly talking about our intention to do experiments with a Ouija board or whatever, and the guy was like, uh, I wouldn't do that. And yeah, 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 sure, <laughs> he's probably putting on a show or whatever. But mm-hmm. uh, but it, all of that kind of electrified the experience. So so uh, so I like uh, no, go ahead, Andrew. Well, as I was gonna say, like I I, I wanna. I want to start a new business, and it's going to call like uh, my it's my supernatural B and B. So we'll figure out what the B and B stands for: booze and uh, booze and Boglins. Yeah, yeah Boglins, yeah. Boglins, <laughs> trademark. Um, so each one's going to offer its own unique experience. So I came up with a couple of my own, and I want to hear your suggestions too. Oh, so oh, pitches. All right, uh, here, what, coming to the Shark Tank. <laughs> my, 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 
my my idea is uh, one is going to be one that's the it's a, a, a the studio of demonic possession, where two or more people show up there and rent it, and one of you is going to be possessed by a malevolent dark evil spirit during the night. Oh, okay, wow. but okay. a little more argumentative. You know, maybe a little more, and maybe it has nothing to do with the fact that like the tap water tastes terrible and no towels, but it's gonna oh, be. Wait, wait. So, so what you do is you get two people, uh, like a couple, right? And then you uh, mm -hmm. you kind of gaslight one of them. You intentionally make everything you frustrating. Give, you make it weird for one of them, and the other's no, like, no, it's the fine for me. Possess. Yeah. If one has an uncomfortable experience because one side of the bed is really lumpy and the springs kind of poke through, that <laughs> yeah, has nothing to got, do with it. Yeah, one side mm -hmm. of the bed, you release like, you know, fart gas or something. And, of course. Uh, and and then the other one, uh, or, or you do a directional sound, and it's just this constant, but only one of them is, is receiving that. And the other one is just like, no, 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 you, you sincerely sound crazy. Uh, not a lot of haunting, a lot of discomfort, I'm hearing. But... Well, uh... well, it is the <laughs> possession, the idea that you know when one person starts to get very irritable, you're like, oh, it's because they're possessed by the dark spirit. Whenever you push back the bed and you see some sort of satanic, you know, writing there, okay? That's okay. one idea. Another idea is my alt universe place. Once you step through this doorway, you are in an alternate universe where it's almost exactly like our universe, but it just deviated slightly somehow now. This is this is like that episode of Sliders when they realize that it's not the Golden Gate Bridge, it's the Azure State uh, uh, Gate Bridge. And uh, they realize that it's almost their home, close enough that some people are like, well, maybe we could just stay there, we'll just stay here. but definitely not their home. Uh... Mm -hmm. Like every episode of Sliders? Uh, well, okay, yeah, but anyway, <laughs> it was only near the end of the first season that they explored the possibility of this, like, well, what if it's close enough? <laughs> like, Yeah, uh, they got kind of tired, yeah, yeah, but yeah, fun show, but so yeah, that's that's another idea. Any suggestions okay. here? Uh, so, it it's, hmm... Hmm. So what, what what are some of the things that you would change? Oh, yeah, right? so I, they I, would walk do, in. I would I would definitely do a cryptid thing where it's just like you just announce like uh, uh, you make up a creature. You're like, oh, the the slimening, and then it's like, uh, what is it? We're like, oh, nobody could agree. Some people say it says tendrils. Uh -huh. Some people, one. This they, is, and this is the slightly off universe. Uh, no, 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 no. This is this is uh, uh, we're we're pitching Airbnbs with unique experiences. So you're pitching a new one. So okay. yeah. So this one would be uh, a pitch where it's like some people call it the black pudding, and you can hear it trickling in the night or whatever and then you you know you got a bunch of like slimy sounds that happen okay slime, and then what, what about uh like a freddy krueger one he's like oh yeah no there's the 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 dream creeper you know oh, people or, or a reverse creeper. where it's just like uh look here's the thing there are two spirits hmm. one is the dream creeper the other is the dream maker and they switch rooms every night. We can't guarantee which one you'll get, but you will get one of them. And you will Ooh. know when you wake up which one visited you. And so well, I'm, I'm looking at my brochure here. Explain to me the what's the difference between the Dream Creeper and the other one. How, oh, how, how would I know which one it is? Well, I mean, one figures out your darkest secret and exploits okay. it for uh, your the thing about to, the to make unpleasant dreams. Mm -hmm. uh, the other realizes your greatest hope. And brings it to you in the middle the of the night. Pudding, and this is not helping me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> Bowls of pudding either way. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One of them uh, just has like you when you when you when you check in, they give you a blindfold and they make you do all of the all of the sleepover scary stuff you would do. So a bowl of spaghetti and a bag full of grapes and uh, more black pudding. <laughs> Just oozing noises. I think oozing noises is probably a good. We can sprinkle yeah. that on maybe all of these ideas. Cool. So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what about what about um, what about the challenge of like uh, uh, there's an angry spirit here, and nobody's able to sleep the entire night. And then what you do is you have uh, some kind of rudimentary AI that just watches faces, and the moment it detects the beginning of REM sleep. It it either chirps or like, plays REM or, <laughs> or plays REM. But but the the point is like at that level where you can't consciously know why you're being pulled out of sleep. It just never quite lets you get to sleep by irritating you a few different ways. Hmm. It's called having a child. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think we're onto some great ideas here. So I think that'll be our new plan. Okay. Be the weird things B and B. The worst B and B. On the planet. That's what the Guaranteed. W in weird BNB stands for. Because everything else is an acronym. Right. Yeah. Uh, you guys want to do picks? 
Yeah, man. Uh, I I got a weird pace. Talking about oh, weird. You want a weird thing? On the Weird Things podcast? Yeah, I got something weird. Uh, freaking Dark Crystal's weird. I've only watched the first episode. Have you have you, have you watched the uh, Dark Crystal Age of Resistance yet? I, I couldn't make it past the first eight minutes. <laughs> the giant information dump that is well, like the yeah, beginning of a I'm video game. The Gelfling sort of thing. And I'm like, ah, I'm like, it was, it was, I, 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 the answer is I'm waiting for somebody to convince me to make it through. Cause then, then we're like, oh, let's watch glow season three. What? Season three is on Netflix. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it's very good. Not their strong suit. Wait, what? Uh, season three is great. Of glow. Of glow. Yes. Oh, it's on. It's on. I'll Welcome to on my this. new B&B Thunderdome. Let's go to the ring. Let's go to the <laughs> transition to the ring. <laughs> We're back I'm to like, DJ Bryce in, in, in Bartertown. I like it. I, I just was like, first one was rough. I'm like, they're in a boring place. <laughs> These character arcs don't really matter what other consequences are. But I think they'd be more interesting if they're no longer here. Hmm. I'm like, let's watch the second episode. We watched the second episode. I'm like... We're two episodes into the will they won't the kind of thing, and the stakes weren't very high for me. And the relationships about people, I was just indifferent to, and like mm. they just each other. The earlier seasons had something big they were trying to move towards. Yeah. Here I'm like, do we get to keep doing this crappy show in a crappy casino where the stakes are meh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> La- my my last thought, is, like I I do agree that they don't really they focus a lot on the character you know relationship and connections and stuff but they don't really show you a lot of the cool like oh what would it be like to do a show in casino anyway dark crystal i, I, I love care i mean I, I, once upon a hollywood okay big, sure. big fan here i love character stuff sure when i'm invested in it and when mm. i when the outcome affects me we're here i'm like eh, they don't okay so what so the so dark the character crystal, work in dark crystal dark the crystal age of resistance is a prequel <laughs> to the movie if you remember it from your childhood uh in the movie when you were a kid uh it was a story of monstrous skexies these bizarre vulture monsters that ruled the land and uh uh the peace loving you know native american uh insert uh the uh, counterpart yeah exactly um and then you know i don't know a few gelfling that run around in the woods very different, very bold decision they made to tell a fundamentally different story. This, Because this takes place before it, this is a time that the Gelfling work for uh, the Skeksis, that, that, that the Gelflings are plentiful, they're everywhere. The Skeksis are, um, they are, they are perceived as benevolent stewards of the Crystal of Time, uh, which, okay. which uh, again, very far... From, I mean, they look like the monsters that we know, but they are perceived by society not as those monsters. And so you get uh, kind of three nested narratives in the very first episode. But uh, the important part is that this is at the very beginning of the corruption of the Skeksis, where they're sort of um, uh, just, you know, skimming a little bit off the top of the power of the, the Crystal of Truth. And it's not working as well as they had hoped. And then the first episode ends with somebody figure like, hey, man, check this out. Grabs a Gelfling, <laughs> stands it in front of the, the Dark Crystal, sucks out the soul of the Gelfling, and is like, yo, but drink this. And then they're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Sure. So much life. We're going to live forever. So it's it's you're seeing the beginning of the corruption. And they, you could tell that they're just a little bit conflicted about what they're up to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and ultimately, the, the whole thing... It so looks does it, like does it mostly follow the Skeksis or well, the well like Gelfling? I said, there's there's three different nar- nested narratives. Sure. Uh, uh, one of our main characters, you watch uh, his girlfriend, is the one that gets her soul sucked out or whatever. Oh, okay. Uh, but, alert. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for the first episode. Uh, but the uh, uh, it the whole thing is uh, at that point there's this spreading corruption through the land. Whole mm-hmm. thing's an allegory for like climate change or whatever your favorite environmental disaster narrative is. Um, okay. But meanwhile, the representation of Skeksis as mid Middle Ages uh, feudal Italian uh, m- uh, monarchs or aristocrats, uh, all of that, all of that bizarre set design, I, I just found delightful. And and what a crazy trick to simultaneously you want to make the puppetry the star of the show, but you also want to use uh, uh, CGI to enhance certain elements of it. Yeah, it looks like it's a mix from the trailer that we're it, watching. It definitely is. And they do a really good job of sort of uh, 
cueing you on which parts are which. It's hmm. it's so delightfully weird. It's just very weird, and I really loved how weird it is. Yeah. So, uh, 10 episodes, if you're only through the first one? Yeah, I'm only, I only saw the first one. Okay. But I, I've enjoyed what I've seen so far. It seemed like a worthy experience. And, man, if you dig w- world building, they have thought out this world and then went back in time and said, okay, how, what would this world look like before it all went to crap? Mm-hmm. And then this is this is a world at the precipice of going to crap. I wonder how you do a big conflict because it's a prequel, right? So we kind of know what the world will be like at the beginning of the movie so i wonder i wonder what the threat is from episode one through ten well what we know from the movie is that the gelfling are all but decimated uh Mm -hmm. the that there are some good guys and then you know hollowed out husks monsters that are in charge of everything so i assume that there'll be a few skexis that we are made to think are redeemable or have have good attributes or whatever Mm -hmm. and we'll care about the characters uh, and certain gelflings that we hope do or don't get caught. And then, um, you know, uh, and then we'll, st- we're still waiting for the native American inserts to show up. Hmm. But, but again, this is all, this is all my read just from the first episode, but I'm yeah. enjoying it quite a bit. I, I worry sometimes when there's a huge info dump in front of movies like star Wars, it worked great. It sort of set the pace, whatever, but then it just jumps right into the action hmm. game of Thrones. I love, there was none. You just you're you're set into this world where you're, the big question you're kind of going, what are the rules for here? What's different? What do they believe? What do they don't they believe? And you get that bit by bit until you built out that whole world. Mm-hmm. Here, like man, like that info dump at the beginning was huge, and then it was know. a lot even for my tastes, and I tend yeah. to be pretty forgiving of those because I like I'm like I'm like okay, give me the pitch, give me the pitch, yeah. and they did. I'm like, this pitch is really long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a pick. Yeah. What you got? Uh, I have been binging this because so the Righteous Gemstones is on, and so I have HBO again. Uh, and uh, I've been taking the opportunity to go and see something that uh, someone who, oh, I guess, is not on this podcast uh, recommended, which is uh, HBO's Succession. Uh, it's a, a corporate drama about a, a dynasty, a media dynasty of, of uh, you know, uh, Roy, what was his name? Uh, 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 Les- Lecter, something, Roy. It's the Roy family. From, from the outside, what little I've seen of the previews, mm-hmm. this looks like what I would imagine is the fantasy of what happens behind the scenes at a Fox or whatever with a Rupert Murdoch right. kind of figure. Heavily and based is. on Rupert Murdoch. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, and so you've got you've got uh, him and then a bunch of his kids and, and, and uh, in-laws and... Uh, all of them vying for for you know different power plays, right? Oh, I want to, because because at the beginning in the first episode, the father gets sick, and so it's like, well, what are we gonna do? And and you know, do we do we push ahead? Do we try to go without him? And and so it becomes a little bit of jockeying back and forth. Um, and so I I do think it ha- it has this weird thing, and I don't know if this is me if my wanting this would make it a better show, but. Uh, you know, like you remember so the US office, right? The first few seasons of the US office, like you actually saw them doing work, right? Yeah. Like they you you kinda like, oh okay, this is a paper company, you see them doing paper company things and then by the end you were like, Okay, this is just like there's people around doing stuff, uh, but not necessarily working. And all of these people are high level CEO or, you know, C level employees and so you don't really see them do much, right? Um and so I think that's a weird thing that I, I don't think it gets into. Um, but maybe that maybe these people wouldn't get into that anyway. But yeah, I, 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 I would read that and I haven't seen it. But mm-hmm. but uh, to my mind, that reads like the cast of Cheers, where uh, I don't think we ever see uh, uh, anybody delivering mail or I don't even know what Norm did <laughs> in Cheers. <laughs> but this is just not a story of what they do. It's the story of what they do when they're not doing the other thing. Yeah, though I think I think. For me, because I think I've been burned on other dramas in the past for doing the similar thing. Like, like uh, one of the faults of House of Cards for me is like you completely lose frame perspective with like the country, right? And so you just kind of have to keep being told the people are angry, right? Um, and there's not a lot of like one on one with that stuff. So uh, that that that's a very like weird ancillary uh, uh thought. But I I really been enjoying Secession. Um, probably uh, one of the better theme songs, uh, but also one of the longest opening 
credit sequences. And I've HBO loves them long openings, yeah. man. And it, but it's 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 a very good theme, and you hear it a lot in the sound. It, it's 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 cool. It's Succession is cool, and so uh, season two is airing now on Sundays. Um, I think they're about halfway through, uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's really neat. Cool. I'll give that a try. Yeah. Um. My pick, and again, I've only I've only had it for a little over a week, and I don't know. Uh, so far, it's been great. It's been kind of everything I've wanted in this sort of thing, and that is the Apple Card, the Apple Credit Card. Oh, really? You got one? Yes. Um, and what I liked about it was I wanted a way to keep track of where my spending was going, where it was doing that was super, super easy. Now, most credit card services offer go to our website, pull up this list, or do this sort of thing here, but we live in a modern age, and there's been, I think, some other credit cards that come out there with, you know, modern ones, sort of similar services. So what makes the Apple Card really good, in my opinion, is that it has this built-in, like, your, you go into your wallet app, and it shows you all of your recent expenses right there. Mm -hmm. You can pay right from that app. You just, you know, within there, you just click the button to pay to your credit, pay off your credit card. It shows you your balance. It's got that. It's got if you need a credit card number to buy something online, you can pull that number up. Yeah. It comes with a physical credit card if you want, which is a notorious big titanium card, right? Yeah, it's a big friggin' heavy. It's a heavy card. It's a good weapon there. <laughs> which what was really cool though is when you get it, it comes in this little this case, this sort of you know this this folder, and you open it up and it says hold your phone here yeah, over the card. You it. hold your phone there, and it activates it. Mm -hmm. And so. Their customer service, there's actually use it through text messaging. So if you have a problem, you can just text message them and get a response. Um, you know, instead of doing points, it's cash back. Like every day, at the end of the day, your purchases, you get whatever, you know, percentages back. Right. So, you know, I've been very happy with the Amazon card. I use that. Like if you shop on Amazon a lot, like get the Amazon Chase card because like you get like 5% back on Amazon. It just oh, gosh. is like, and these things, they make a difference, you know, and like, you know, Apple cards like 1% or 2% back, depending upon that. And if you think, you know, I don't, I use, I use a credit card instead of a debit card because I just pay it off at the end of the month, but mm -hmm. because of the points, it just works out well. And at the end of the year, that's a couple thousand dollars, you know, ends up being so, yeah. so far so good. I've enjoyed it. So you know, it's been useful. I, I know as part of the um, cash back, the, the, the 1%, 2%, 3% changes based on, so it's like one percent if you use the the physical card, two percent if you use the digital Apple Pay, and then yeah. it's three percent on Apple products or yeah. stuff on the apples like through the phone. Yeah. Um, are you finding that you're hitting a lot of those two and three percent things? Because I know around here, like like we have H E B is the local grocery store here, and mm -hmm. I've never seen the Apple Pay things work there. And yeah, I'm looking at my my purchases like <laughs> McDonald's. They ordered that. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of two percents here. A lot yeah. of two percents here. Okay. Um, <laughs> that moment that uh, Andrew could think that either us or the audience doesn't know about his deep affection for <laughs> McDonald's. Uh, I, uh, once a week, <laughs> once a week on Sunday and cheat days when we do McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, the, no. the the interesting thing for me is the like the no fees thing. So like there's mm -hmm. no late payment fee at all or foreign transaction fees. I mean you still have to pay off your balance, of course. Sure. But uh that's and, seems... and then you do have to pay interest on right. you know, but 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 the fee, the the, the needling of like gotcha here too. Yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. That that seems really interesting. I, I uh I don't know. It seems very cool. It seems like they're trying to do a lot of cool stuff. I know there are spending apps for any credit card. I've never liked any of the ones that I've found or like, like I was using mint for a little while, but it is so over one run with ads and there's no way, or at least when I was using it to like stop recommending me credit cards and all these other like right. pop up stuff. Um, so like having it all be through the phone is, seems pretty convenient. Are you guys, are but, you guys uh, fired up over uh, the new, uh, new iPhone announcement coming up? Yeah. We'll we'll see we'll see I you know yeah. it's it's I just one more thing on this was though it's just that sure. it's interesting we talk about what companies are good at what they're incentivized for and Apple thinks well we know X number of people carry a balance so making that percentages is really good but we also know that every time somebody uses Apple Pay they get a part part of that transaction fee you know they make that mm -hmm. and so. I think they've designed, from my point of view, and again, there may be other mileage, but I think they designed a great product as far as using a credit card there because of what it does and does not do. And the reason you're not, like, Mint became a crappy experience is because, like, oh, we'll make more money if we push these ads towards you or whatever. And Apple has created this thing where you want to use this because that that 
that immediate gratification of, I bought this, and the end of the day, look, you made 12 cents today, and it shows up in this little thing here. You see that, you're like, yay, 12. For some reason, is it accrues mm -hmm. that that psychological reinforcement, you know, it's a little, it's good. And that's also probably perhaps insidious, yeah. but so just, just the, the final note on that. Yeah. But as far as the next phone, like the, the whole Apple, Apple ecosystem where they're going, what are the we'll new things see. about the new phone? I heard that there will probably be a third lens, yeah, a wide three, angle, three lens. cameras on there. Yeah. Um, but I would rather have a wider angle selfie lens because I just don't have a very long arm. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that'll be on there too. There'll, there'll be some well, kind of improvement on that. Um, maybe. The... Because uh, the Google, the Pixel phones have the like ultra wide mode. So you hit it and it like zooms like way out. Um, and I really like that. You know, if you ever try to take a photo of a lot of people all at once. Yeah. Uh, you know, that that's just a cool thing. But uh, Here's I, what I'm going to like about it. Uh, it won't be broken like the lightning port on my current phone. This mm. is the first year ever that I set out a up, update cycle. Yeah. Uh, and as a result, you know, by just living in my pockets, enough lint gets in there or whatever that the mm. lightning port totally, totally hosed now. I'm surprised you didn't just you, take it in you for can clean them out. or something. Uh, I, I mean, I, 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 I went through uh, six or seven iterations of, of, of getting closer and closer to everything working. And then now I'm at the place where, where the recommendation is, <laughs> take a take a piece of wire and just scrape everything and hope you don't break I, it. <laughs> I had that problem with mine, and I tried a few different things. And then I went to the Apple store, and that guy knew. Like I'm like, oh, what do I need to do? I think it's broken. The, the lightning port. He's like, oh, let me take a look. look Done. All right. He fixed it. Andrew, you're not trying to talk me out of upgrading to a new iPhone, are you? What's what's oh, going right. on phone's here? Hosed. Your phone's hosed. Your phone's hosed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I will I, say, I'm talking I, you into the repair, hmm. the replacement value of the one you have is you can get more money for it if it's right. not broken. Yeah. Um, here, here, here. Yes, more cameras. I think Bryce, you said. I think that's great. The thing that I've been hearing, and it's a matter of when it will happen, is right now the depth data stuff that the phone gets right now. When you take a photo, mm -hmm. there is a depth map of that too, which shows you, you know, what's closer to the camera. It's further away for both. The front one uses the points. The back one uses both cameras to be able to capture this depth map, which is incredible. And I've heard that they're looking into adding in. Uh, more like uh you know we talked years ago we talked about like, like the litro camera which was able to like have variable sort of focal points and i was all kind of dismissive i'm like you'll be able to do that in software you're not going to want a standalone camera for this and and that stuff's the, that the, this is the one that was a camera that like you never had to focus because it took all possible focal lengths at the same time yeah yeah it took a you know a, a number of them and it was like i'm like yeah, this is neat tech but it's not nobody's going to want to not real people aren't going to walk around Lytro, so you're, we're just going to get that inside of light field tech. It's going to end up inside of phones and stuff, which is what's happening, you know, um, because it's just, it seems the natural evolution. Wider angles, as Bryce says, go wider angles, bigger chips, because that way, after the fact, you can frame your shots. Now is doing depth. It's like lots of depth data, because Apple's talking about big on Tim Cook won't shut up about AR, how excited it is about augmented reality. Mm -hmm. And we think there will be another Apple product, which will be augmented reality glasses. The way this relates to the phone is, if you can get those things to capture 3D. So if you take photos of stuff and they're in 3D. So, yeah, okay, so the idea is get ahead of the curve. We start using this stuff for the next, what, uh, th uh, two, three, five, seven years. And then seven years from now, they're like, oh, one more thing. All the photos you've been taking for the last seven years have 3D. Data. You can now watch, look at 3D representations mm. of everything. Probably a much sooner timeline than that. Um, I've shown you on the phone before the little demo of when you use the front-facing camera, how you can get the side view profile. Yeah, it's pretty good. Take... Yeah, mm. and it's and that's just that is insane. Telling developers like, hey, look what you can do. The AI algorithms right now for image processing stuff is insane. Like, did you hear about the one that can like? I don't think we talked about this before. Like, it can take, if you have a doorway, like an open doorway, and you have a flash, you can see what's inside the other room. Based on because, reflections on the other side of the door? Be, well, because of the, the timing of the flat, the photons bouncing around the interior of the other room, if you have a camera that has a super, like, super, super fast camera, like, we're talking, like, you know, picosecs, some, some crazy sort of length of doing this, it can actually measure like radar or whatever this wow. wave just came in from here this oh wave just God. came in from here 
So there's like, if you look up like uh, deep learning, image processing, like seeing around corners and stuff, there's all this crazy stuff. Like the stuff they're like, they, I think Google's using now is the AI to enhance Photoshop in the dark because AI can improve, can figure out like this is right. what it is. They have a resolution. Google has a technique for taking like blurry photos and giving them higher resolution. So all this stuff, and there's 3D processing stuff of like, here's how to take a couple 2D images. We've got a network that's been trained on enough faces and things like this. It can reconstruct the backs of people's heads or whatever. So uh, I think we're going to be seeing some sort of physical AR device sooner than later. You know, I think I think probably next year is probably going to be that. But we can see. You can tell where Apple's going by where they go with the development kits, and there's tons of AR stuff. We talk about occlusion now, where if I put an augmented reality object in, a, in the video screen of what we're looking at, I can wave my hand in front of it, mm. which is a big deal. Like, it's real-time green And it could just basically like, just, just, just sketch it out because it knows what the frame before and yeah. the frame after look like, and it's like, well, let's just draw well, that actually, out. Well, actually, what it does, it actually uses a neural network trained on hands and faces and bodies and stuff. Okay. Oh, wild. Wow. Yeah, because it, remember it has the full image there, but then what it does is it's it's this, it, it's they because they bought this company a couple of years ago that was working on like so there's so much crazy sort of stuff under the hood going on there. I think this year we're gonna see a bigger step closer towards it. You know, we're gonna see I think another layer or something added to photos. I, I I am confident that amazing stuff is coming, but I am really surprised at how little um for for as awesome as all the AR demos we've seen before from Apple have been. I'm surprised at how little it's affected my life outside of using the 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 tape measure app. That's about well, it. Because it's dumb. <laughs> and, 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 I, and what yeah. I mean is that like Apple for the longest time, people said, we want touchscreen IMAX. We want touchscreen IMAX. And Apple's like, you don't, you don't. There's a thing called gorilla arm, where if you hold your hand up for too long on a screen touching it, your arm gets fatigued. Mm -hmm. And and people, you know, now that we have iPads and stuff, we're not really like, you know, they'll put it in like some laptops and stuff for, for desktops. Yeah, you don't really want that because it's a pain in the ass to have to lift your arm up. The problem with AR is you're holding a stupid phone up. And and you see these experiences of great. And I played with the demo kits and play, I'm like, man, this gets lame. I got to hold my phone up here and stare at this forever. And I, Apple knows that. Apple knows that's not the way to experience AR because they're the ones that told us you know, about Gorilla Arm and stuff. And that's why they want that the glasses or whatever, like Magic Leap or HoloLens, I think that's where they know that's the real the real application. Right. Because mm -hmm. it is, I agree. Like, you're like, ah, it's cool, but the tape machine is, other than that, like, okay, I'm going to hold my phone up, I'm going to look through the window and go, oh, amazing. <laughs> and oh, I can almost see whatever, the Minecraft <laughs> yeah. world. And with, like, with the new phones, a big part of it is, is software stuff, right? Like, that's where they can be the most secretive and have cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, I've been using the iOS 13 beta on my phone pretty much since since the first public beta came out and it's it's it, it's neat there's some new stuff you know the sharing screen is a little more robust and is uh is a little it has more options on it uh there's a night mode for people who are interested in night mode so there's native you know night uh color schemes um uh, the oh the big thing the big thing which you don't need a new phone for but they have the the apple key the default apple keyboard has a swiping um mm -hmm. based input now so like this sw the old swipe keyboard right or a g board has it what, uh, what was the, the benefit of the swipe keyboard because it, it's way quicker so you just swipe your word got it and and you 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 know you can do it with one finger instead of two thumbs um it's 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 interesting and seeing that on ipad where typing on ipad is especially weird if you're like handheld right now having swipe on that will be a, will be really interesting um but I don't know. I, I I think it'll have to. It's it's all about features, and I I wonder what other new features they can add since they've already done the, like the full screen display. They've already got the the face ID stuff. This this mm -hmm. year, there's a blue unicorn you could pretend to be. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's their they they re you reach the upper limit of like can't you know it's it last several years like now the, your selfies can do this this and this and it reaches a point of like all right. But you do find a lot of stuff like looking around at the developer code for 3.0. Uh, like I said before, the augmented reality, they changed the format sizes for the images. It went from like iPhone formats to like almost like a fourth ratio, like a ratio like you would expect per eye in 3D goggles. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of little stuff behind the scenes that like, man, 
this is like we're designing we're making this for hardware that has not been released yet hmm. which you know they've done before when they changed before the iPad came out they changed like oh this is the sizing for screens like well there's more than two screen sizes here what's going on guys hmm. Hmm. so so the question i guess is do you think that they're going to make hardware or are they going to make a software API for for other companies to make hardware they'll Glasses. make the hardware they'll 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 make their own physical eyeglasses or whatever eyeglasses whatever um eyeglasses <laughs> yeah they will make the hardware they will make it you know they they want to you know the reaction we've we've given when we first hear about like you know the the stage is set for them because like the ipad came out after there were tablets that sounded awesome but then sort of just weren't because of the limitations windows tablets. and now with hololens you know everybody does like oh the field of view is this and magic leap oh the field of view is only this if apple comes out and nails it with like well this is what you really wanted Mm -mm. But I don't think we'll see it this year, but I do think we'll probably see more AR like things yeah. in the phone. Cool. Right on. So, cool. All right. It's been weird. Well, hells yeah. I'm going to let my AC run for a little bit. It is sweltering here. Oh, okay. is it? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, here, I'm going to run to the restroom. Yeah. BRB. Did that speaker issue wrap up? I don't know what that was. Uh, Were you hearing that? What what like was it a loud noise or? Uh, it was at some point you you jiggled the thing and and it there was some some oh, weird. Uh, uh, I think the volume was just too high. It, uh, okay. it, it, I was definitely hearing a I could super hear, like, high end feedback yeah. on, on this, and so I just dropped the volume and it. Well, seemed it wasn't to be just fine. feedback; it also seemed like there was sign of a low end. I know that also it, there is kind of like a like a like a like a e or some kind of ground loop feedback if you don't jiggle the wire. So my guess is I also accidentally fixed it. Uh, okay. I I was intending to fix the feedback <laughs> yeah i accidentally fixed the jiggle wire thing ah gotcha okay. yeah well yeah let's go do a thing all right everybody we're gonna do after things here in just a minute thank you very much uh scar master uh thank you for uh uh hanging out with us on the subscription all right how's everybody doing so i uh i was talking it up i've been talking it up on the streams for the past while I had gotten the Alamo season pass, the movie pass thing from the Alamo Draft House. I think, I think, I, I canceled it, and I think, I think it's today or tomorrow where it, where it turns off. But uh, it's a little too expensive because it, it ended up being with with you still had to pay the online fee, which was like two bucks or something. So it ended up going from like twenty dollars a month to being like twenty six to. 30 if you know i went and watched even more movies so the live the, the night attack that we'll, we will stream tomorrow will be the show from out of bounds comedy fest uh that'll be after we do the bizarre briefing here on tuesday so keep an eye out here you'll see it on the feed uh probably in a couple days after that uh but yeah i uh i um uh and also check out the discord we have an announcement channel which i where i made that announcement uh before we turn on the stream today check it out we have an announcement channel um, but, uh, it, uh, was, it was interesting. I'm going to check out, I might, I might try out the Regal, Regal Unlimited movie pass thing because, uh, that's much cheaper and Austin is in the cheapest tier of, uh, of that program. So I might try that out, but you know, Regal's is like, it's not a, it's the one that I go to, I'm pretty sure is not a 4k screen. Um, and sometimes the projection stuff is not very good. A lot of times the sound system is not great. Um, but you get like, but I think the convenience fee is only like 50 cents or something. And you get like a concessions discount. So I don't know. Is that too loud? Can you hear? My no, AC? Fine. No, I think it's fine. Okay. What were we talking about? Uh, I was talking about the Regal Unlimited uh, Movie Pass type program. Do you do you oh, watch a lot of movies? Have you have you considered getting one of those? Oh, you have stubs. You have the stubs A list, yeah, right? Yeah, we use the AMC. We don't see it a lot. We see it enough to justify the monthly fee. And and the thing that I love 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 about it is like we're gonna go see it, and we bought our tickets like a month ago. Yeah, you can reserve. You know? So uh, that's been. We don't. You know, we're probably their ideal customer because maybe we see one movie or two movies a month, but. The convenience of or pre-ordering tickets and it you allow you get all the nicest seats or whatever. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Okay, everybody. So we get after things coming up here. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Anything you want to talk about for after things? 
Um, I'm reading a really good book. I'm not far enough into it to speak about it with authority, but uh, but it's way good. Uh, it came out Never last year. Never stopped me. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hmm. Let me double check. I don't think we've gotten any emails. I don't know why I typed in. I said emails and then I typed in Gmails, and so it didn't <laughs> autocomplete. <laughs> Let's see. After. Yeah, it doesn't look like I have anything here. Hmm. Uh, is it too early to talk about your thoughts that you had today, Brian? Um, yeah, we can we can talk about that loosely. I wasn't sure if you're still too early in thought on that to talk about it out loud. <laughs> Well, uh, to be honest, the the only downside is that we definitely talked about it off air. So this will be like a performance recapturing that. How well? How about we talk about the theme of when is it time to go all in? Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Uh, all right. Well, then let me. And how to make it work? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, HTTPS four three three. Oh, we can talk about that so, on the show. So many, and yeah, so many, so many syllables. Right um, yeah, we'll, we'll answer that question on the episode. Yeah, what's up? Alrighty, uh, I think I'm good to go. You guys good to go? Yep. Yep. All right, let's do after things. In three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. Gentlemen, it's time to go broke or go home. Well, I think we've already done one of those. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> we might have to do the other one, too. <laughs> no, uh, as a matter of fact, right now in the chat, uh, one of our uh, fans asked, when are we moving to the new studio? Good news. Last night, I was there until about 1130, uh, putting in sound baffling, and we were able to tame this amazing big big old studio. In fact, we have a, mm -hmm. for the video watchers, we have a whole bunch of uh, photos that I took. We did an impromptu AMA yesterday, and I and went this around. This on the Modern Rogue Patreon. Yeah, and 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 uh, I uh, we grabbed a bunch of photos of how stuff is coming along at the at the new place. Uh, it's really happening. Uh, it looks great. I, I'm expecting a card table with a microphone and a dingy warehouse from Saw. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and we're not that anymore. <laughs> yeah, so we put up like I think it was like twenty pieces of baffling uh, across across the walls, and you can even see on the on the ceiling here. That was the one I was most surprised by. Uh, uh, oh yeah, what, what a difference it makes to to do that. Uh, that mm. was uh, uh, the aesthetics are you know we we try to keep it simple. They're kind of zigzagged all around, uh, but uh, we're also making a monorogue episode out of that where we're doing kind of a before after mm. like. We, in order to get the maximum beforeness of it, we had to uh, move everything out of that whole studio, and it is unusable. It is horrific. Like, it's like you, bad. you would clap, and it'd be like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, mm. four Mississippi, and, and you'd then, be whispering Mississippi, and that would make it even go longer. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, but then the after uh, by last night, you know, uh, on top of all the sound baffling, and then laying down the carpets. Uh, it, it, it was astonishing. I would say, like, now you clap and then, you know, whatever echo there is is gone in under a second. Yeah, it's it's enough that, especially once there's a little, there will be more objects in there. So, like, you can kind of see if you're watching the vid video that they're a little higher up on the wall. Um, and, and that's partially because this room is taller than, uh, say, a normal room would be. Yeah. Um, and so the it's more effective for those baffles to be higher up because we'll have stuff closer to the ground. Like, when when before we did all this, we had a bunch of stuff in there. Yeah. And it was all on the ground and in the corners. And even though it was against the wall, it didn't help with uh, the corner in the upper part of that room. So these are very, these are going to be very uh, efficient for the unused space. Well, once people are in there and there are objects and things also helping. Yeah. And then uh, meanwhile, throughout the rest of the place, uh, you know, we've finally got a lot of uh, operational things done for the new HQ stuff like, uh, you know, the septic system and uh, uh, functioning showers. And uh, mm -hmm. we, we got a, we got another surprise uh, <laughs> when it comes to the 
came to the shower side, oh, um, uh-huh. <clears throat> the plumbers rightfully expected that everything was tied into one system, and it turned out it wasn't. It turns out that uh, the previous tenant had been having all the poops go into one bucket uh, basically Wait, and then he so, would spray it everywhere because <laughs> i knew i, I mean that was uh, so the, the this has been chronicled on nine i knew that the septic system was just a hole in the ground going right. to a pipe in the ground so the shower was also a different pipe in Correct. the ground going Correct. to another hole Jesus. two independent non-compliant crazy person Christ septic things <laughs> But so so the big question that we were discussing right before the show started is we're getting to that point where um, so so you begin with an idea and and obviously you know this whole show is about trying to be an independent creative so you you begin with a hypothesis a theory a, a suspicion and in my case it's um, every time I've ever done a collaboration the results have been tremendous why don't everybody do collaborations answer because it's very expensive to do so why is it expensive so then you ask the question behind the question the reason is it's expensive is because not so much for the flights the flights are substantial investment but uh it's the hotel and it's also the perception that it's like okay you're gonna have to stop all the things that you do at your place and then uh press them on pause swoop on out here let's shoot as much as we can and then you run back home and we get back to work like what if we broke that that uh, that narrative what if we made it so that you come out for as long as you feel like coming out and you're able to bring your significant other and uh there's essentially no cost for the whole time that you're out there what if we built a shared production an artist collective a, a you know kind of kind of a Bauhaus of podcasting basically then all of a sudden you get an efficiency of scale and uh so far even though we've got a long way to go mm-hmm. it seems to already be paying off we've had we've done more collaborations in the last like 3 weeks than we had in the previous year and these are uh, uh top tier talents uh, at the top of their game who are bringing content to to our channels and i got a phrase for you okay go for it maybe you've thought of this maybe you've used this if not it's genius if you did it's still genius okay <laughs> skywalker ranch of podcasting yes that's exactly that's that's exactly what we want to do or or the only bummer is that podcasting is perceived as something slightly different than youtubing and i don't know i don't know how uh, or maybe, oh, well, the Skywalker Ranch is streaming. Whatever. Oh, what, you know. what about just Creator Ranch? Yeah, but I'm saying, the, but the, the idea is the, ex, the to explain it to people who know what Skywalker Ranch is. You go, oh, I get it. Yeah, right. Well, and so, so here's the question that we're starting to have to to wrestle with is we've got a lot, uh, we've got a lot of the fundamentals finished, and we just passed like passed like a, a county inspection, which is good. We, everything seems to be lined up, but uh, damn, damned if if we're broke. Uh, like 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 now we're at the place where it's like okay, we either need to press pause on everything and step back and and just you know six months from now you know hopefully make enough money doing what we're doing now to be able to do the last twenty percent, ten percent, however much, uh, or we need to make a big ask, and so. The challenge that we're wrestling with right now is how do we how do we tell our story in a way that the simplest version of all this is go to the people who already love you the the core of your gravitational well Mm -hmm. and just say hey guys (laughs) need more money and then uh, however many people are all the way invested will give more money but i suspect there's a way to do it in a clever enough way that that you attract more people into that gravitational well where people invest and say, you know what? I've been watching this stuff for 10 years and what, what you're up to looks just crazy enough that I love it. And I want to be a part of it. I want to be a a founding uh, founders club member of, of whatever this thing is. But then you run into all of the storytelling stuff that you have to figure out, like, well, what is the thing called and what is it that we're doing and all of that. And so those are the issues that are sort of, Uh, rattling around in my brain right about now you know it's interesting is looking at when disney does that and disney's done everything from like uh 
paving stones like they have the, the, the they built a whole walkway where people bought those stones those the bricks to do yeah. that wait, wait, Epcot, when they did that did they make a specific promise that your name would be there forever or was that just sort of asterisk whatever disney contract dot 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 says can do you know what well, beca because uh. like on the on the the bat uh, uh the poorly implemented side of that same impulse like i will do anything to avoid the the embarrassment of what Leo Laporte had to go through at Twit, which was selling bricks on a property he didn't own, and then having to explain to everybody why they're still great now that he's moved to a strip mall or whatever his current situation is, right? So it's like that horrifies me, and and that makes me very reluctant to make that move. I I think that yes. I think if you qualify beforehand and like, as long as we own the property, this will be here, give yes. or take three months. I think just you just put that caveat there. Like, I don't think people buy the bricks, not because, man, I want this brick here to be forever like the pyramids. You do the thing because I like what you're doing. And if I can have my name be part of the thing you're doing, that's great. If that thing doesn't get exist there anymore, I'm more sad about that than my stupid brick. You know? Right. So. Right. I don't I would not obsess over that. I okay. would not worry over that because, you know, ah, Brian, I bought this for the brick, not because of your dream. Well, and, and I <laughs> guess that's the other thing is, is you have to, from a storytelling perspective, figure out, like, what exactly is the story that people are buying into? Are they buying into the uh, possibility of, of uh I don't know, being at the ground floor of the next Disneyland, or are they buying into, uh, yeah. I just want you to make more stuff or bigger stuff or louder stuff or, or I'm, I'm wearing a boring company hat because a billionaire guy worth $20 billion on Twitter said, I have a crazy idea. I want to fund it Buy an overpriced hat and help me fund the thing. I'm like, Okay, I will support your dream, Mr. Billionaire, who, you know, one one puff of smoke on uh, Joe Rogan probably cost me a hundred grand. Uh, uh, that's fine. <laughs> not there. Uh, you know, I have a friggin' flamethrower, a weed burner. I have a weed burner in a, you know, an airsoft rifle that's called the not a flamethrower because I have a dream. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I like your idea. Money bags musk. I'll still do that. Not bitter about, you know, uh, what? Your your tweets that affect my mature, my my portfolio. It's fine. Still and love I, the dream. I I think you bring up a really good point because the uh, I'm I'm invested in one place way too much. Yes. No 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 no. My my point is like I I think you bring up a really good point, which is like the story matters, man. Story matters so much, and it's like, are you along for the ride? Do you think this is a cool idea? You care about that much, much more than it's like, uh, uh, what am I throwing my money at a billionaire? Yeah, I, the, the person matters. The person matters. You know, mm -hmm. like, like, you know, Musk is, I, I, I get so much enjoyment out of the things he's doing and what he's doing. And the corollary for you is your content you create. People get so much enjoyment out of this. And if I know contributing or helping you in some small manner means the fun continues then yeah, make up whatever dumb excuse you want me to to do, and and you know I will, you know I you know charter member of the you know Brushwood Ranch Society, you know what does it get you? Charter membership in the Brushwood Ranch Society, you know. Oh, and tripods and stuff to hold our cameras. Done. Well, and and that's one of those moments when you realize like, oh my God, story really really matters. Story like 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 you have to have a narrative that that goes to this. I, and I I'm gonna interrupt you because like. I know what you mean by story, but story can also mean narrative in the fictional sort. I mean, the reality is you are doing a thing, right? And 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 that Musk doesn't craft 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 a narrative. He's like, I've got a hat. Buy the hat. Support the company. Mm -hmm. We make podcasts. Buy this thing. Support us doing this. You know, yeah. the the item is. If you keep it simple, people understand yeah. it, and they know they know this transaction. Yeah. Right. yeah, there's like, not, there's not a, he's not weaving, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a history of the hat or the boring, co this hat means that you'll get a free ride and the boring company tell, there's no promises, there's no promise implicit in that at all. It's like, hey, if we sell a thousand, if we sell 20,000 hats, we'll have enough money to hire people to do this. 
And you're like, oh, that's the story I want to be part of. Like, I bought one of 20,000 hats to go help finance this. It's, it's a simple transaction, a tangible good for the people who, for a significant number of people will care about having a thing. Right. Whether it's a hat, whether it's a rock, whether it's a shirt, whatever. And then basically it's a standalone litmus test because there's no, like, uh, there's you're not pitching at that point. Like, everybody knows what's going on. You're just asking, hey, where are we at? Uh, do you guys want to give me money for a hat and we keep on going? Or not or not yeah, even, we know i mean not that's even hat. like a... I mean, the hat is the symbol of what we did but you know uh just quick aside so the funny thing i got the hat because that's cool like i wear tons of spacex gear i wear a boring company hat they tell you about like how i had like three people come up and recognize the hat in like the span of an hour one was a person of five guys another person walked down and goes oh cool hat and then this woman walks by and goes oh love the hat i'm like oh cool i'm walking along and then i'm like that was the general manager of Boring Company. <laughs> Ooh, no way. <laughs> I for real? Like something familiar about her. Like, oh, she's the one. She's the one like runs, you know, Boring Company for Elon Musk. It was too good. <laughs> oh, that's to amazing. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, but but that was the kind of the cool thing. And that's the cool thing about like when you do your scam stuff and that gear and all that, too, though, is the symbol is the idea of like, yeah, you know, founders hats, things like that. Or uh, you don't even need. It has you know you you've, you guys are much more smarter at figuring out what the things need to be than I am, but just it's, it is what it is. It's mm -hmm. to make this thing you like to bring more of the thing you like. And I think it does. Uh, I, they, I I think there's been an interesting hearing both you and uh, Brian and Andrew talking about this. Uh, it's been interesting the last few minutes in terms of like, you know. Uh, buy the thing, buy the support the hat, or buy buy the hat, support our thing. But then Brian saying, uh, buy the hat, support the thing, or we'll stop. And I think it there's not there doesn't even need to be like this ultimatum because if you make it an ultimatum, then suddenly it there's peril. Right. It, if if you project that we're in peril, I I bet it's it's like the Kickstarter thing, right? People are more likely to to put money into a Kickstarter if they know that it's funded. Right. And your, if you say, your, well, if we don't get enough money, the boogeyman yeah, sounds like some flim flam kind of. And you're not. I mean, I understand like it's right. your heavily investment there, but you'll be podcasting in a van down by the river. I know this right. about. Well, you. And, and, and that's one of the things it's like, like what's in peril is not not the project, not the development or whatever. Yeah. What's in peril is the schedule. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. uh, well, it might take a few more months than we thought. Uh, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. But 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 also, oh, my God, it's been it's been it's been 16 months. I'm really excited to move into the goddamn place. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're, yeah, people, I mean, we're already on board, you know, like we spent there the past are, 16 I have months Patreons telling you. I support. I never watched them. I never, I never paid attention to the content. I still support them because I want to know they exist in the world. I, I gave an Oculus quest to an artist friend, you know, with, with no real strings attached just because like, I like their art. I want to see what they do with this. This will be cool. Like if they, we could work on something together, that's great. But man, this person does really cool stuff, and it'll be neat to see what they put out there in the world. That was my real goal. Right. Was, you know, and that's with your fans. It's like, yeah, I guess we have people support us. My perception is that you only get to press that button so many times, and right. I fear. That, like it's it's a scary moment to be like, well, this is my one time to press the button. So you you get to press it when you when I worked in the nonprofit world, uh, which is terrifying. You you're doing this all you're doing these asks all the time. So you have to draw a box around what the, the real thing is. Every time you do a project that goes towards its help, part of it's towards operational funding to keep the lights on. But you do have things you need to do. So you can draw a box around and say. Hey, we need to build. We're we're working in the podcast stage facility. We need to do. We're doing a fundraiser for this thing. It'll be something unique. Rated this. We're selling these things to pay for the 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 podcast studio section. You know, mm -hmm. next year it's going to be like, hey, listen. You know, we want nicer quarters for people to live in on the grounds. We're going to build a little park. We're going to do all this sort of stuff. We're doing this. We're building da, 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 park thing to do this. That's the way Disney does it. Is that it's like we're building this new thing, and part of it is it's just this it phases so. You can describe literally what the thing is that you're funding because right. when you want to do that, to ask next year, it's going to be different things. Draw a box around this. Like, yeah, last year we did this. This is what we did. This isn't this great. We're so excited by what we did last year. This year we're going to do this. Yeah. Will you be there with us? Keep it focused on the current project, the current, yeah. the next 12 months on what is going to come.
Right. Because I think toilets. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, like, we need toilets here, you know? Yeah. And well, that and, was and, part and, of the toilet thing last year. Yeah, right? that was that was like, literally what we did was like, uh, we need to poop, right? And, and then we now did. we mostly have toilets. Uh, mostly, except for that weird <laughs> side jack. <laughs> Hopefully it'll so be fixed in, in a few days. Comments, you get like, I already bought in, so I will continue doing to help any way I can. And, that's, it, and you want to make sure that each time it's this... What you don't want in the foundational world, like when we would go talk to, you know, Money Bags McGee and say, hey, we need money. Money Bags McGee did not want to fund the same thing every year. He didn't want us to come to him every year and say, help us pay for our rent. And it's like, um, is this going to be my deal every year I got to pay for rent? Mm-hmm. We would go, hey, we want to bring in such and such speaker to come in right. and speak. They've got a big fee. Can you do this? And also, say, oh, you can we'll come and join us for the speaker because we're doing this thing about, or whatever. They didn't care about. They just wanted to know it was going to something different. They, they, that was unimportant to them. Was just they wanted to know that we were doing this is a new project, and then mm-hmm. you know we would then do a dinner with that speaker and raise other money. But there was ways you say, hey, we're going to go. We're going to do a program this year to go to this many schools in this underprivileged neighborhoods. We want to go to thirty schools. Will you underwrite that? Because rent, rent's not sexy. You always have to pay your rent. You always right. have to pay your bills. Uh, w- 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 was there like a best practices to to how often you would do campaigns? Um, you know, it depends upon you would you would with your your regular donor base. You know, you could do you know once a year. You might do a regular sort of thing, and then if you had bigger things, you're doing every couple of years for much bigger infrastructure things. You could do that. You have different donors you might approach differently. If you have a bigger donor who you know every year their foundation is going to write a check for something. You want to come up with a reason every year to say, "Hey, give us a check. You know, give us one of these checks for this." Um, I I was able to go into schools and teach critical thinking because the Johnny Carson Foundation, right? And and that was they were happy to keep doing that every year. Was like this year, you know, we'll let Andrew go into schools, help him go do this. So for them, they were willing to do this, but they would do that for a couple of years. But after a period of time, then they want to go. They want to share the wealth with somebody else, kind right. of thing. Mm-hmm. So then it's like, okay, we'll go find some other backer. So it could be yearly, bigger things. You know, it comes down to if people look at it and go like, oh, I see the difference it's making. Right. Yeah. Well, and that, and, and that is, luckily, we were able to show some sincere yeah. differences from last year to this year. Uh, but, uh, man, it's just a, it's such a nerve wracking experience to figure out, uh, like, like, when do you get to ask and how often? And, you know, for uh, as far as timing stuff goes, I mean, sh- uh, showing off how things will be different. I mean in the near future like this podcast studio and stuff will will drastically make, change will make the migration over and yeah. so that will be an immediate thing people will see across the shows that we make here uh we've already started doing some modern rogue stuff in you know in the big steel building uh but now that we have that studio space there could also be stuff in there right um not to mention you know the the kitchen set that we've we've shot some some smaller things at is like totally different and, and fully built out now um, so being able to see, you know, talking about seeing, seeing the change, that's, we're on the cusp of that. Yeah. Uh, and there's, it, oh, go ahead. The, yeah. The difference between this and scam stuff is scam stuff is I've got to weave a story about this color changing pocket knife or lighter. I've got to weave a story around this because you could buy similar ones in other places, but I've got to tell you why ours is different because not just because of our presentation or pattern but i'm going to weave a story around this physical thing because i'm competing i'm competing with other companies trying to sell you magic stuff here it's the the shows the thing you like and like i mean i've got like i i canceled one of my online subscriptions because it was it was one of these cable was one of these like network things i was not watching any content on there Mm -hmm. i let another one continue to run like i probably won't watch anything on there this month but man i love that other show like hulu like hulu was always on the verge then i watched you know they'd had you know what we do in the shadows like oh that was great i would have missed that if i didn't know that was worth my eight bucks or 12 bucks or whatever i spent that month on it i'll keep letting that thing run because if you keep bringing me stuff like that every few months i'm happy yeah Right. Yeah. Uh, that, that's the way I am with uh, HBO. Like, like there'll be weeks at a stretch that I'm like not watching a damn thing on there. But I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, but then they're going to come back with another season of last week tonight yeah. or whatever. And like I when Game of Thrones ended, I dropped HBO for a couple months because I didn't see anything good on the horizon. Right. And now that Gemstones is here and I'm getting into succession, I'm thinking of getting picking it back up uh, on my own. So it's like, you know, it's you have to demonstrate you demonstrate it. Speaking of which, should we? Should we move into picks? Sure. sure. Oh, wait, one side thing. So we were talking about the Disney bricks. Oh, I, yeah. Tell I, me, so tell I me found others. this on the Disney blog. I think this, this is from March. So Disney's Walk Around the World was the name of the program. 
because they are doing all this new construction and renovation, they will be tearing out these bricks in August 2019. Um, uh, you can go to the park and get... Because they are not meant to be taken out, so you can't take yours home, but you can get a <laughs> replica. But apparently the commitment was that they would be displayed until 2011. I don't know exactly... Some of these bricks... So they did make some kind of specific promise. Right. Wow. Um, but that was that was eight years ago. So, uh, you know, it, this is uh, uh, probably not the first or the last example of making commitments on bricks and well, then realizing and, and, and you I need guess, to move bricks. I, I, I guess I need to uh, I need to do a little bit of research on, uh, you know, uh, various examples of this, because I know that there are people who deeply value when they go to the Wizard Academy and they go to the Fang and Feather Distillery. Mm -hmm. Like they're so super stoked to see their name on the wall. They have of small wooden name yeah. tags all over the, the wall of this distillery. And, and certainly that's that's a big part of what we're trying to put together here is is this isn't just a vague cause that you're supporting. This is a physical place, a physical collective where hopefully art you enjoy happens and that on top of all of that it's also a physical place that you can visit and mm -hmm. be a part of yeah you but, know it it's mm -hmm. there is a value that well like, i'm just thinking like man like there's a i've been a benefactor to one organization where like i bought a chair i think i saw the chair once i've been there and multiple times but they move and i bought like a another thing like a they had a chalice or something grave thing i've never seen it i'm supposed to be there it's supposed to be on a shelf i don't you know, but but there is that the first time you do that, like, I want to see it. But then you're like, no, I'm just doing this because I want to keep the lights on. No, you know? that's a that's a really good reminder, because I all of a sudden suddenly I'm thinking of how many Kickstarters I contributed to. And then after, you know, doing the hundred dollar tier or whatever, I select don't send me anything <laughs> like I'm just uh, just glad to be here. Glad you're doing the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it'd be funny it would be like uh, technically t challenging, but like. You could have an LC display that's like, hey, today's electricity or this 15 minutes of electricity paid for by so-and-so. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Reddit has that thing on with the Reddit gold or Reddit coins, however they work it now, where on the front page of the site, it's like, um, it, it, it's usually like this many people are supporting the website today. Let me see if I can see what that looks like. But I, I know that they have something like that where... It's, it's oh, they have sort a running of a tally of people tally who are just sort of donating. Yeah, uh, I can't find it. Anyway. See, so already got somebody in there who says they'd happy to help out with something like that. So you know, that's a. I would say, uh, uh, brainstorm, J Van Allen ninety three. Brainstorm on some ideas of what you think you could do that would be that you could do to set up for them. Yeah, you know, their their bandwidth is very very <laughs> overwhelmed right now what trying to do but i think if you you know if you can come up with something cool or clever like that that would it would be very very i'm sure you guys i'm speaking for you but i think you'd like to hear it right uh yeah absolutely yeah. uh <laughs> somebody can carry load because right now they're oh man their hands are full trying to move into this thing but if you know i think clever things that don't require you know brian and bryce and everybody else to have to spend <laughs> too much time trying to put together get learning it done, how to code are great ideas yeah uh, sorry, we were going to get into picks. Oh, the, yeah. The yeah. Uh, I'm Brick reading picks. this book. Part, part of the reason I'm so thoughtful on this is there's a book that came out last year called The Formula. And it's uh, basically trying to scientifically distill the laws of success. And uh, uh, I'm only halfway through it. I got a, uh, got a ways to go, so I'm, I'm going to get everything wrong. And I almost certainly am going to go back and reread the entire thing again. Mm -hmm. But it's delightful. Because so much of it is putting words to these intuitions. And, you know, we're unpacking all of these here on, on the After Things podcast. But, um, like, the, the first rule is that performance drives success, which, well, that's obvious. You know, if you want to be the most successful tennis player, you should probably be better at tennis than everybody else. Mm -hmm. But then it gets into the question of, like, well, what about the art world? There is no objective measure of performance in the art world. Art and art experiences are 100% subjective. So then what? And and what they come up with is the second law, which is uh, when, uh, when something's unmeasurable, network effects determine success. And then before any of this, you have to define success because success is, is it measured in dollars? Is it measured in, you know, uh, clout, whatever that means? And so they define success as the uh, I'm going to mess this up, but uh, uh, the benefits of recognition from 
your community, whatever it is. So in the scientific field, success is number of citations from other uh, uh, scientists. Uh, mm -hmm. For uh, for a pop star, it's going to be you know the largest sellout cloud or, or crowd or how many um, how many awards they win and all that. So once you once you. I don't know, this whole scientific approach to something that has always been very ephemeral, I've, I've really been enjoying. Uh, so I'm going to finish this and then read it again. But I'm uh, I do feel skeptical of something that says the universal laws of success. I mean, this is uh, or uh, <clears throat> replace the word universal with the observed laws of success, because they they uh, basically I mean, they, they back everything up with case studies and uh, everything from you know, generation of taste tribes and, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know. Success is just such a mushy word that they seem to call their shot and stick to it. They, they define success and everything that I'm hearing so far, I'm like, yeah, no, that seems to be how it goes. Hmm. You know, and I think, I think, and I, I'm just looking over and I just ordered it actually is, and I think qualifying what that means versus great, because that's the problem. Like a successful in the art, we're like, ah, oh, I'm successful. Like I'm by myself in my room and I'm having, that's great. We're going to talk about the miserable kind, which is great. And the fact that once they said like, how do you measure success in the art world? I'm thinking in my head, well, well, like, you know, there it, it comes down to more like convincing other people. And as soon as you said network effect, I'm like, yes, this is, sounds like they put a lot of thought into this. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, success uh, to some people means, you know, uh, the, 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 the quiet satisfaction of a life well lived when you go to bed, you know, it, but, but instead they're all like, they're like, can't quantify it. Not what we're doing. And so they're, they're constantly trying to figure out like what could be quantified. And then they're finding specific things. For example, there are studies, um, uh, in music success. There was a study where they took, uh, nine people, uh, nine groups of people and, uh, introduced them to a new music service that was invented just for this. They made sure all of the bands were independents that nobody but their family knew. And then they said, uh, hey, everybody, uh, uh, go nuts, download and review however you like. And uh, as a thank you for participating in this test, you will get to keep any of the downloads that you like the most, right? Uh, then they, that was the control group. Everyone else, they split into different cohorts. They basically spawned eight alternate universes and just uh and they added the detail of uh, a leaderboard of a billboard of how of what was the most popular or whatever and and publishing reviews and all that stuff and all of a sudden you had eight alternate timelines where different early thought leaders gave different early opinions and different leaderboard numbers drove people there 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 was one pocket universe where you know Coldplay was the biggest thing in the world and another pocket universe where Coldplay was the worst worst rated out of all of them uh and all of it seemed to follow this trend of of early adopters and the network effects determining where stuff goes on from there then they said okay what happens if we d uh, alter this universe so here's a pocket universe where Coldplay or whatever the Coldplay equivalent is, uh, uh, what they're currently at the bottom. What if we just lied and sh swapped all the numbers and told everyone that they're the most popular thing? And then sure enough, uh, uh, you'd watch it genuinely per the downloads, uh, climb up the ranks. And so, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really interesting stuff. I'm digging it. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that how incredibly contingent some things are is amazing. can be inspiring or frightening. Cool. Uh, I got a pick. Um, so this is a video game pick. It's a, a new, very, it's a little game, um, but uh, I've I've had two gatherings with people where we've played it and it, it was immediately beloved. Uh, it's uh, this new game called Heave Ho. Um, it's, uh, it's really good on the Switch because you can just use the Switch controllers. Uh, but it's like a climbing game, so everyone is as one of these little one of these little dudes with two with just two arms, and you use the joystick to move the arms, and you use the shoulders to grab, and so you you uh, have to work together to make it across these puzzle, make it across these levels, um, and and make it to to the end of uh, to the end of the level. It's it's. Uh, it, it's not a, a terribly new idea, right? There are other games like uh, Mount Your Friends or I Am Bread that are the same sort of like grab and and you know aftertouch sort of thing. Um, 
But I think what makes this different is that it's way simpler. You're only controlling two arms, and you're just using one joystick, and there's so it's, no it's stamina. A bit like, um, it's not 3D. Quop or uh, if if Angry Birds is at its heart just the joy of pulling a slingshot, this is mm -hmm. at its heart just the joy of swinging on monkey bars. Uh, yeah, but in a virtual format, basically, and and because I think the thing with I Am Bread or I guess Mount Your Friends is is a little different is. Like those are meant to be challenges or meant to be challenging for, by yourself. Right. Where these are, these kind of, I, I can't quite tell, but it seems like the levels kind of stretch based on how many people are playing. So you can play it by yourself. There's like a solo version of the campaign, but it is a lot of fun with, with four people and everyone trying to get to the end. A bit and, like uh, maybe Space Team, where it's like the more complicated and chaotic it is, yeah. the, the more joyful it becomes when everybody cooperates together to make something happen. Right. Uh, but the simplicity is is the key here because it's like space team's all about confusing people, right? Right. But here you like you learn how to play by doing the ready up by readying up. Like you grab a bar and then everybody just goes up into the game. Uh, so it's it's dead simple and it's only like ten or fifteen dollars or something on the Switch. It, it's a fantastic party game if you're looking for a party game. Cool. Heave ho. Sure, Bryce. If I ever go to a party. <laughs> <laughs> um, all I know is I saw that. And I'm like, man, like my two anxieties, fear of falling and trying to work with a group, getting something done. <laughs> Sounds I like dancing to me. Just watching. Hmm. <laughs> my pick is the Righteous Gemstones. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. How far in are you? So, well, three episodes in. Okay. So I've only like, seen the first two, if that, if that helps to couch anything. So here, let me explain my little bit conflicted. I... Danny McBride to me is kind of like Seth MacFarlane. I'm a huge fan of the person, not always the things they make, right? Because like a lot of Danny McBride characters for me, they're unlike. Like I couldn't get into like Vice Principals because like I just I love Walter Goggins, I love Danny McBride, but I didn't find the characters likable, and I was just like not invested in where they went. So by Gemstones, at first I found it very unlikable, but then. The, the bond by the end of episode two, the bond between him and the family, you start to like, and John Goodman's great. I really, I got invested in the show now. I'm like, okay, there are more, there are awful people outside of, they are awful people, but there are other awful people around them. So I'm, I'm into this now because it's not just watching awful people be awful to nice people. It's being, everybody's sort of awful, but these people at least have something to make them likable, which I liked. Um, uh, and then, yeah, I, I won't royal ruining do you know but do you know who comes into play in episode three uh oh uh i i did watch the next week on and walton goggins shows up at some point yeah yeah okay walton goggins is on there so and great he's great it, it looked like he was doing some kind of spin on billy graham or something he he yeah you'll see i mean okay. he's he's just he's the the universe got bigger and i'm like this is great i'm just i love he Walt, walton goggins is i want to call walter but he's He's great. He's just one of his people that everything he's usually in is just made better by his presence. So, oh, I just I I think I'm picking up what you're sketching around, which is uh, the narrative. Of the first two episodes are they're the biggest player in town, and it sounds like you're implying that the universe got bigger because now they have actual competition in somebody. Uh, 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 uh no, I mean, I don't. I'm, I'll watch it. it. I'm, I'm going to watch it. Don't worry about don't it. Watch, it's no, fine. No, I meant, I meant just as another character to be involved with and to see part of this sort of thing, mm -hmm. is 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 that's what I liked. Is just the 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 because you had the dynamics of the brothers and sister, you know, and there and this and then it's like okay, you know, the 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 wife and the fiance are sort of a little bit outside there, but now you have another person we're going to be following who, we'll see. I hope I hope he's a regular because it's that's just, great. Just, Walton Goggins is fantastic in just about everything I've seen him in. Yeah. And it is it is what's great about that show is that like you know that the the way they portray kind of like southern wealth, you know, like the house designs and stuff like this, the way it sort of works, you know, you know what what does a ranch mean in, you know, South Carolina or whatever? What's it, it's a big piece of flat property or some trees. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of grass, you know. And it just just I love all of that. So nice. Uh, great. Cool. And of course, what we do in the shadows. Oh, uh, I finished it. Ha! Uh, so good. 
It's uh, perfect. Also, uh, uh, very much seconding your your pick of the righteous gemstones. I I've watched the first episode like almost three times now. Oh wow, wow. Well, because I have to like after I watched it, I had to bring it to my loved one, and then had to bring it to my friends, and then had to bring it to you know. <laughs> have you heard the word of the yeah. righteous gemstones? <laughs> exactly. So, cool. gentlemen, it's been after. Boom. Hey, good work, everybody. Right on. All right, that's gonna do it here for us on the. Yeah, no, 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 uh, cord killing today. Yeah, cord killing was off this week. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Uh, start briefing in the afternoon, and then uh, night attack in the evening. So make sure you get your notifications on and check them out. Yeah. Uh, fun, fun fact. Uh, I only today realized. Oh wait, I'm teaching my two-day class tomorrow. So right, I'll not be around. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I was thinking because I was thinking like, well, why don't why don't we shoot that second segment on Tuesday? And then I realized, well, you couldn't even if you wanted to. Right, uh, or when, when yeah. or Wednesday, right? Or Wednesday. What's yeah. This, what's this class you're teaching? Uh, uh, at Wizard Academy, how to build a audience through online video. Uh, oh. oh, it's uh, it's getting better every year. This will be our third year doing it. I'm really mm -hmm. excited about it. Wow. I yeah. Didn't realize it was that long. And then um, uh, and one of our alumni. Uh, Ali Spagnola just released a new song that uh, is about the plight of a creator on the internet and dealing with the uh, comments that you receive. Oh, wow. Nice. Alrighty, everybody. Well, we'll be back with those streams and more later this week. You have a good think one. a woman have it easy. Everybody be nice to her. Like, what are you <laughs> saying? Don't, don't, don't. Oh. <laughs>